Hi there, this is an orientation for SketchUp for Schools and I'm going to start just by going over the areas of the workspace and getting an idea of how you start up a new project. So this will be hopefully very brief. When you first start the program at edu.sketchup.com and you log in with your Google credentials, you'll see that there's a character waiting for you. You can right mouse click on that character and look at the entity info to find out the character's name. In this case, it's Dr. Temple Grandin. Um, that character is just there for scale. Everything is to scale with the real world and so it's good to have a reference like that but we'll probably remove that character later. Also notice that we have three axes. There is an X axis that's red, a Z axis that is green, and a Y axis that is blue. And up at the top left corner we have a menu, something of a file management menu. You can click there and start new projects or open existing ones, but untitled is a thing I'm going to click, and I think the first thing that you really should do is give this thing a name. And I'm going to call this first project file and say OK. And the, the real feature of SketchUp for Schools is that it saves things on our Google Drive system. It's a really good idea to make yourself folders in advance. Of course, you can always make your file projects and then move them later, but I've gone ahead and made a class folder and I've made a project folder for SketchUp projects. Select it, don't go into it, just hit the select and that's what's going to choose to store the file right there on your Google Drive. Next bit of orientation over on the left hand side we have all the toolbar items that you might want to use and it's a little disorienting because it's it's a tricky thing finding the, pro the, the tools that you want but notice when you hover over them it'll give you an indication of what tool is showing up and when you click it'll bring up alternatives associated tools that are similar to the one that you've just clicked on and you can choose these to become the dominant tool as well. So I'm going to go back to select. There's shortcuts for these things that we'll go over later on. Next thing, make note of the status area down below. You have an undo and a redo button. You have a help button down here so if you want to go to the help center and get some more help it'll open a new tab and let you find answers for things, do a little bit of searching and let you link on to videos and tutorials and all sorts of things. I'm going to close that for now. and I'll close this as well. Uh, there's also a language button if you want to change your language. You can do that. Over on the bottom right, keep an eye on this area. This is the measurements dialog and it will come in really handy when we start drawing things to scale. More on that later. And finally over on the right hand side, think of this as sort of an options menu. There are a series of different categories of options that you can have, including entity info information that we were just looking at before, and these all sort of react to whatever you're currently clicking on. Now notice you can turn these things on and they just keep on paneling off to the left hand side of the bar to the point where it actually gets pretty busy in there and a little bit confusing. You can close these these panels by hovering over the top right corner of the panel and clicking the little X. So if you want to turn them off, notice that they whoops, notice that they go black as you turn them off from the blue. So I'm going to close all these things and just use them as I need them. And that pretty much does the orientation. So get ready ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start with a, a small project just to get a feel for it and the next video is going to be about navigating the screen and the tools. See you there.